Here's a little behind the scenes of this video. Jack is watching me film and then I have my list on my iPad. So now you know. Hey there friends, welcome to a new video. If you're new here, my name is Kim. I just finished up my second year of being a fourth grade teacher in West Michigan. And I'm super excited for today's video. I'm kind of always excited for new videos, but I'm especially excited for today's video because I'm partnering with my sweet friend Toya from The Classy Sassy Life. And she is a wonderful first grade teacher down in Alabama. And I just love her content both on Instagram and on YouTube. So definitely go check her out. She does a ton of plan with me videos and classroom videos and all sorts of fun stuff. So definitely check out my link below to go see her channel. And together we are doing 10 back to school tips and maybe Jack will help us out too we'll see what happens <laughs> but we're doing 10 back to school tips for how to prepare to set up your room and then actually set up your classroom so I'm going to be doing the first five over here on my channel and then Toya is going to be doing the second five on her channel so I'm going to link her below her channel her video her Instagram all the fun stuff so go check the description box to check her out so the first tip that I have for you is to take inventory of what you already have in your room so that way you don't end up buying something twice I am totally guilty of doing this I accidentally repurchase books and stuff like that all the time but a way that I found that you can help yourself to not do this is opening up your cabinets and taking pictures and then saving them into a folder on your phone so opening up all of your cupboards and cabinets your you know teacher desk drawers everything and anything that you can see in your classroom and just inventorying that on your phone you also could have like a running Google Doc or something like that of what you already have so that way you don't end up buying the same thing twice this also helps you to make sure that you're not buying things that you don't have a purpose for I can be guilty of that as well sometimes I buy things if I can find it for a really good deal or if I just think it's really cute but then I get into my classroom in the fall and I don't actually have a spot for it so that's something that I try to avoid doing I'm not always great at it but I do try to avoid doing that my second piece of advice is to decide on what your classroom theme is going to be or color scheme or whatever it is now do I think that you need to have a classroom theme absolutely not I think that your classroom space should be a space that is inviting to children and a space that they want to be in and isn't overwhelming so I think as long as you're going with those things you don't necessarily need to have a theme I also personally do not change my theme from year to year I kind of have just like a living room vibe is what I try to go for in my classroom so I try to go for really like muted colors so I have a lot of like blacks and browns and grays and whites and like some green in there too and I try to just go for things that are very calm that I would put in my house because I want the kids to feel like it's kind of their home away from home and I want them to feel very comfortable so because I know that I don't have bright colors in my classroom I'm not gonna go out and buy colorful book boxes or rainbow artwork and stuff like that because I know that that's not something I would want to put in my classroom just because it doesn't match like what I have going on already so if you have like your classroom theme or vibe in mind over the summer it's going to make that buying process a little bit easier if you're able to do so try to get into your classroom and take measurements and have those saved on your phone so that way if you're going out and you're trying to get like fabric for bulletin boards or whatever you might be looking for you already have the measurements saved on your phone with you and you can use those to refer back to as you're buying some of those things so I would recommend taking measurements of basically every single thing in your classroom that you would maybe need a measurement for so like the perimeter of your classroom take measurements for that take measurements of your whiteboard of your bulletin boards of your bookcases pretty much anything and everything that's like big in your classroom your tables or your desk whatever it might be I would have all of those measurements saved in my phone so that way I can make sure whatever I'm getting for my classroom is going to fit the space. Tip number four is to make a map of your classroom. You could totally do this on just pencil and paper and you could try to make it scaled to size. So if you have those measurements, you can actually scale it all out and map it out exactly how it's going to look. So then when you get in your classroom, you know where all the furniture goes and it doesn't seem as overwhelming. You also could make a digital version. My sweet friend Maylene posted a video a couple summers ago, I think, where she showed how to make a digital representation of your classroom or a digital map. And that's what I've done for my space every year and it's been super helpful in trying to figure out where everything's gonna go so then when I actually get to classroom setup I'm not moving things around a million times I pretty much have an idea of where every single piece of furniture is going to go and where the decorations are going to go and so on and so forth tip number five is to make a list of your must do's and your may do's so your must do's are going to be all of the things that must get done before the first day of school so for example getting your furniture where you want it that needs to get done before the first day of school or before open house also have 
having maybe a calendar or a schedule up, that probably would be a must do. Then you're gonna wanna think about your may do. So things that would be really nice to get done, but don't necessarily need to get done. So some examples for these would be like if you have pom-poms above your group tables, those don't necessarily need to get up before the first day of school, but they would be nice to get up. You probably don't need to organize your desk drawers before the first day of school, but it would be really nice if you could do it. So those are the things that once you're done with all of your must do's, you can move on to those may do's and do those smaller projects, those things that don't necessarily need to get done before the first day of school, but would be really, really nice to get done before the first day of school. Hey friends, editing Kim popping on a second because I wanted to let you know that I did update a freebie that I had on my TPT store that I uploaded the other day to make it more friendly to classroom setup as well. So I will link this down below if you're interested in it. It's great for any like lesson planning you're doing this summer or anything, I don't know, that you want to do with classroom setup planning. And also while you're on my TPT, take a second to follow my page. And this is what my classroom setup little additions look like in this product. So you can plan out like what you want to have in your classroom, your must do's, your may do's. I even added a box in there if you want to draft out like what you want your classroom setup to look like. And then there's just some other pages in here for note taking as well. So I will link that down below if you're interested in downloading it. So those are my five tips for getting ready to set up your classroom for this back to school season. I know some people go back in July, some people in August, some people in September, so wherever you're at. And I also know that this year, Things are looking a little different. Some people have already decided that they're doing online schooling or hybrid or whatever it might be. I would love to know in a comment below if your district has made a plan for what you're doing this fall, what is it going to look like? Because my district hasn't 100% decided, but we did just receive some news from the governor that kind of gave us an outline. So I'm just really interested. What is your school year gonna look like? Do you know yet? Do you not know? Do you know when you'll know? <laughs> Definitely check the description box below to get a link for Toya's video over on her channel where she's gonna give five more tips that we came up with together on how to set up your classroom and just make sure that you're doing everything that you need to get done and all that fun stuff. I also want to really emphasize that you do not need to spend a ton of money in your classroom or really any money at all in your classroom to make it a warm and inviting space for your students. You can get very creative with the resources that you do have. A lot of times when you go into classrooms there will be some things that are already there and just by going through those things and figuring out what you can use and what you can't, you can make your space very inviting. You can do printable decorations that you could either make yourself on PowerPoint or find online or go on Teachers Pay Teachers. Like You don't have to spend a ton of money on your classroom and I really don't want you to like listen to this video and see you know my posts on Instagram or whatever and think like oh I need a classroom that's exactly like that because a lot of the things that I have in my classroom were either donated to me off of my Amazon wish list or from friends and family or you know wherever or they're things that I did save up for and bought but because I wanted to like it's not something I needed my classroom would be high functioning and would be a good place to be regardless of whether I had potted plants or not. You can get really creative by asking for donations off of your Amazon wish list or from friends and family or you know waiting and asking around with teachers who maybe are retiring and asking to take some things from their room that they're not going to use anymore. You could look on Facebook Marketplace or at local garage sales. There are so many ways that you can save money for your classroom so don't feel like you need to go out to like Target Dollar Spot or wherever and spend a ton of money because that's just not the case. Thank you so much for watching this video. I will have a new vlog up on Wednesday, so I will plan on seeing you then. Bye.